Um, I agreed to uh, a brilliant invitation to come and join you again um, after a little while uh, when Rads got in touch and said, hey, do you want to come and preach? I went, sure, I'd love to. She said, when you were available, I was like, oh, I'm not sure. Um, this is the only weekend free, it's the 16th. She went, great. Uh, and then she got in touch again and said, hey, so uh, you've got the readings ready? I was like, uh, no, not really. Um, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. So, uh, so I thought I should do some homework. And I'm sure enough, it's Trinity Sunday which sucks <laughs> because Trinity Sunday is a day when um, heresy um, is committed across the Christian world um, as countless preachers try and usually fail to give a glimpse of God's identity as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Although I really like the words you used. <laughs> I really did. Um, now, I slipped into the trap this morning of trying to spend a little time um, trying to unpack what Trinity might mean, and I bombed. So I'm taking a different, uh, a different tact. But it is worth noting that whenever we try to understand the great mystery of who God is, um, usually in the huge challenge of life of discipleship of how we try and mirror who God is um, out in the world and reflect that love to others, um, words and sometimes even actions fail to really grasp the experience or our experiences of God as broad and varied and diverse as they are. Um, and for this reason, trying to understand God as Trinity, as Father, Son and Holy Spirit has become quite an academic affair. And that's a good thing because we need to hear that. Uh, but it can also distract us from the very experience that's transformed our lives, our relationship with God, our relationship with the creation, and our collective relationship uh, with God. So Trinity sucks. Well, at least Trinity Sunday does. <laughs> it's a really odd um, celebration. Um, in, that, uh, in, in the church year, we tend to celebrate you know, really big milestones, you know, like Christmas or, or Easter. Um, here's a, a weird celebration where we spend time thinking about a doctrine of the church, which just isn't really that sexy, it, but it's uniquely Christian. Amongst the uh, Abrahamic faiths, um, our understanding of Trinity as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is central to our faith because relationship with God and relationship with creation is central to our Christian faith. So... Let's look at some of the words we've heard today. First, uh, those words uh, of wisdom, about wisdom, in Proverbs. Here, here's what we know about wisdom according to the portrait in Proverbs. Uh, wisdom is a creation of God. Um, the first of God's acts, a long, long time ago, even before the earth was created. Second, wisdom... Uh, participated in God's creation. That divine handiwork that we hear about in the reading today, rejoicing in God uh, before the outset of the world. But it didn't only just rejoice with God, wisdom uh, shared in God's delight. A delight for his creation, a delight for humanity. Now, what's the thread here? Well, the thread here is that Trinity is about relationship. Um, and the unifying thread at play here with wisdom is the relational nature of God revealed through the passage we've heard about. Beginning with wisdom as God's playmate, master worker. It was relational in the process of creating Wisdom was relational in the process of molding, of shaping, of illuminating, and delighting in the created order, which are beautiful, beautiful words. It affirms the relational quality of God that we see in the inner workings of the Trinity. God doesn't work alone. God is more than. God works in relationship. God engages beyond God's self. The gospel reading, though, from John, more explicitly demonstrates the spirit. Um, and it would, be, it would be easy to fall into the trap when we hear about uh, 
uh, what Jesus is saying about the spirit will come as though there was some sort of divine kind of um, relay race where God comes first as father then as son then as Holy Spirit but of course those of us who know those opening scriptures in Genesis know that the spirit has always been there in the Gospel of John it, it more explicitly says that the inner relational uh, dynamic of the Trinity uh, when when it says that all of the father has is mine it's a reality that will be declared by the Spirit it sounds really complicated it's actually really simple but the moment we try to put into words what is immeasurably simple words around the great mysteries of God are never ever enough because God is a God of relationship the triune God is relational and there's something beautiful about that relationship being expressed in such simple terms as relational God the Father God the Son God the Spirit are beautifully entangled in this kind of divine dance there there's an action that might be simpler to a simpler way to put it reminding us that that God's very nature uh, is not just that he's not a lone ranger but that God is communitarian in nature God is a God of relationship God does relationship and this is completely at odds with what most of humanity finds comfortable particularly these days when so many people are seeking to become their better selves I want to be my better self I'm just working on being a better self and that's laudable to some extent but it challenges this way of thinking around God challenges our individual kind of orientation it, it speaks uh, prophetically maybe about uh, our culture's glorification of personal agency if our God is at once individual and communal and communal one in three and three in one then we are called to mirror that dynamic in our own lives we can't be lone rangers one of the great things about this community is that I know you're not lone rangers <laughs> is that you act for the common good you act collectively uh, you seek and discern and you pray together but you don't do so without God you bring God into that process God is communitarian and as we seek to be God like so we are called to be communitarian in community in relationship with God, with one another, and with creation. Our John reading, more specifically, comes uh, from a lengthy part of, uh, of John that's really about kind of a farewell series of notes. Um, the section begins with Jesus washing his disciples feet actually and then it ends with these beautiful prayers just before Jesus is portrayed and arrested um, much of the material in this section is unique to John's gospel it covers a wide range of topics including new commandment to love one another and Jesus's role as the true vine Jesus talks in the particular verse we've heard today about the forthcoming of the Holy Spirit as he does elsewhere in that in that whole collection and and immediately beforehand he promises the disciples that that when he returns to the Father uh, an advocate or helper or comforter will come he will reveal the truth about himself and the world this is the Holy Spirit we're celebrating this is the Holy Spirit that will teach us everything But what's re-emphasized is that this is going to be a difficult journey, a long journey. This isn't just a one-off thing. He re-emphasizes, Jesus re-emphasizes that here, indicating that the continuing journey of discipleship that lies ahead for all of his followers. And, and there are some parallels here with, uh, with some of the Moses story, 
when you hear about uh, Moses' farewell speech to the Israelites on the great exodus um, into the promised land, where he promises that Joshua will act as their guide when he's gone. And in a similar way, uh, the Spirit will take up Christ's work after he's ascended, will lead uh, his followers ever deeper into a revelation of the kingdom of God. But Jesus also makes clear how this works. Jesus says uh, that the Spirit will only speak as God the Father commands, just as Christ has done in his earthly ministry. The Spirit, yes, is distinct from God, but acts only in accordance with their divine nature and will. Although not explicitly mentioned here, the, the, explicitly mentioned here, the, the Christian understanding of Trinity derives from verses such as these. Does it sound complicated? It is. I told you it sucked. <laughs> So I'm left then with some things uh, to ponder, just a few. Uh, but I invite us all to ponder on one or two things uh, together now. The first is, in, in what way has the Holy Spirit led us together further in our understanding of who Jesus is? The second is, how has the Holy Spirit continued to guide you into all truth, in your own lives, in community? And what, if any, does the significant, is there a significance of the Trinity have for your faith? Trinity Sunday, as, as one preacher says, is a healthy reminder that um, preachers to, to preachers that we just don't know very much. But it is also a gentle reminder that those glimpses of what we do know of God are best discovered and best proclaimed by sharing our experiences of that relationship. And to be confident in declaring and proclaiming our, uh, our love for Jesus in all that we do and we say and we are. So my challenge to you, as my challenge is to myself each day, is to remember those glimpses of God and to name them with the best words we have for the time and the place and for the people who are in our presence. May all know those glimpses of God and may the Spirit be with us all in all of those moments. Amen.